Hello, you're back for lesson 3-3. Three, three. We're now going to be working with polynomials, but we're going to be working with long division and synthetic division of polynomials to check and see um, for the zeros if a um, linear equation is a is a factor of the polynomials. It's it's pretty cool. So here we are. Um, I'm gonna show you here in our book. So hopefully you're on um, approximately page 253, 251 here. So we are determining factors um, by a long division. So whatever it expects in the book, that's how I'm expecting you to show me your work by hand on the assignments. But by all means, I'm going to show you today how you can investigate all of this using Desmos. <clears throat> um, so we are going to be using long division, just like we learned way back in um, elementary school. That's going to be fun. So we want to see if x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial x squared minus 3x plus 2. So we're going to set it up just like a long division. And you're going to ask yourself, um, what can I multiply x by to get to the x squared on the inside? And so that's why they have an x on top as the first term of the quotient. And then you're going to multiply through by that. Um, we're going to do a couple different examples here. So I'm just going to take you to my page. Um, paper so you can see. So number four in the book is the first one that I want to go over. And the key is the polynomial that you're trying to divide up, make sure it's written in descending order and that if there's any terms that are missing, you put a zero there. But we have an x cubed term, an x squared term, an x and a constant. So we have all of the terms in place. So we have to multiply this x, 3x, um, we already have a three, so I just have to multiply it by an x squared, and I'm putting it over the x squared term. So x squared times 3x um, is 3x squared. x squared times 2 is 2x squared. And remember, in long division, we subtract. So this gets subtracted, and that gets subtracted. And we actually get 0 there. And then we're going to bring down the 3 minus 3x. Um, and what do we have to multiply 3x by to get to minus 3x would just be a negative 1. And then we have um, minus 1 times 3x is a minus 3x. And then a minus 1 times a minus times a 2 is a minus 2. But we're subtracting them. So that becomes a plus and a plus. Um, so these actually add to zero. So essentially 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 factors into 3x plus 2 because it's a remainder of zero. This binomial 3x plus 2 and this binomial x squared minus 1 are factors. Then we can also see that x squared minus 1, we know that that factors on its own. So this is 3x plus 2, and that factors into a uh, conjugates of x minus 1, x plus 1. Um, now, the cool thing is, is I'm going to show you how this can be checked in Desmos. So I'm expecting you to show me by hand how you're getting here, um, but by all means, check it in Desmos. So I have that first one up here in Desmos. I'm gonna turn on the graph. You can see the zeros at negative one and a positive one, and then the one in the middle at a negative two thirds. Um, and you can check to see if any value is a zero by clicking on the gear and then making a table. And then um, I'm going to go back to my paper for just a moment here because I want to 
see something. So this is what we were checking, right? This 3x plus 2, which is this one right here. So if 3x plus 2 is an even factor, then we solve for 0. So we're really checking to see if x equals a negative 2 thirds is a 0. If, if this f of a negative 2 thirds is a 0, then it will equal 0 when you put it into the function. OK, so that's what we're looking for. Is I'm going to put a negative 2 thirds into Desmos and see if it comes out of 0. So this is how you can use Desmos to kind of check your work, make sure you're headed in the right direction, even though you're going to have to show me your um, the longhand work by hand. So when you create the table here in Desmos and you put in a negative two divided by three and it comes out as a zero, that means that yes, it is a zero. It will factor evenly. And so then you're just gonna show me the long division. Okay, and you can verify the, the zeros right here in the graph, it's so cool. Okay, so let's do another one by hand. I wanted to do um, number six by hand with long division. And number six is we're checking to see if x minus three is a factor of x cubed plus two x squared minus x minus three. Okay, so if we multiply x times x squared, then we can get to the x cubed. So you have to make this first term. That's what you have to subtract away first. And then we distribute and we get a minus 3x squared. But because we're subtracting, we get the opposite. And so x cubed minus x cubed is 0, which is what we wanted. And then 2x cubed and 3x cubed is by, or sorry, 2x squared plus 3x squared is 5x squared. Um, and then now you're going to say, what can I multiply x by to get to 5x squared? So it would be a plus 5x. So when I, when I distribute 5x through, I get 5x squared minus 15x. So I'm going to bring down this x minus x. So I'm going to take the opposite. So that the 5x squares cancel, we have a minus x and a plus 15x, we have 14x. And then I'm bringing down my minus 3, oops, right here. So x times 14 up here will get me to 14x. 14, 14 times a negative 3 is a minus 52 or 42. 42. <clears throat> Taking the opposite. And so a negative 3 and 42 is a positive 39 is my remainder. So because I have a remainder of anything at all means that this is not a factor. X minus 3 is not a factor. And I can check that in Desmos. Check in Desmos of f of three. I'm using f of three is because x minus three means that x equal to three would be the zero. So let's just see what f of three is in Desmos. So I've got my function down here. I'm going to turn on the graph. So we can see the only zero on this graph is at 1.1 for 8. Um, and so I'm going to click on my, my line here where I typed my equation. And then I'm going to go up to the gear and go down and choose the, the table. And I'm going to put in 3 to see what we get. 3 retrieves 39. And that is the remainder that we got. And so nope, that's not a zero. So x minus three is not a factor of that polynomial. 
Now there is another one I would like to do. And that's going to be number um, nine. And so let's go back to my paper for a moment here. Number nine. Number nine says we want to see if x plus one is a factor. Okay, so I have to actually fill in all of these. So x to the sixth plus the space for x to the fifth plus the space for x to the fourth plus the space for x to the six, five, four, three, x squared, x plus the one. And this is an x plus one. So I have to multiply this by an x to the fifth to get there. So I get x to the sixth, and then this becomes plus x to the fifth. And I'm gonna take the opposite. So those cancel, I'm left with a negative x to the fifth. And so this, I need an, a negative x to the fourth to get me to a negative x to the fifth. So then this becomes a negative x to the fourth. I'm taking the opposite. So I have an, an x to the fourth left over. So I need to multiply x times x cubed to get to the x to the fourth. So x cubed plus one or times one is a plus x cubed. Taking the opposite gives me a minus x cubed left over. So I need a minus x squared to multiply to a minus x cubed. Then we have a minus x squared. We're taking the opposite. So we have an x squared. So that's going to take an x. So I'm going to have an x squared plus an x. Taking the opposite, I'll have a minus x. So I just need a minus 1. So a minus x and a minus 1. Taking the opposite, I have to bring down this 1 and they add to two. So I get a remainder of two. All of that work. So I don't think that this is, so we're checking to see if this is a factor, then we're gonna look at f of a negative one. This, right, f x plus one equal to zero. Means that a negative x equal to negative one should be a zero, but let's go see. I don't think it is because we have a remainder of two. So let's just go see what it is. <clears throat> so in Desmos, we're gonna say y equal x to the sixth plus one. Let me turn off my other graph here. So it does not look there's like there's any real zeros at all. So I'm going to go up to my gear and I'm going to turn on the table and then I should be able to put in a negative one and you can see that negative one is, let's see, I highlighted it here. It's two, just like we thought. <clears throat> so number nine would be the trickiest of the tricky. Okay. Um, so the next one I would like to do is talk about synthetic division. So synthetic division is really just a quick way of doing long division without writing every little last thing out. So this is x squared plus x plus one. Let me go back to my paper here. at this polynomial and we want to see if x minus one is a factor. That's the question mark. Okay. And so synthetic division. So 
we're checking. So that means that X would equal to one, maybe a zero. But we're not sure. Okay. So I'm going to go take you back to the book for just a minute so we can walk through this synthetic division, how it simplifies everything. Okay, so this is our long division. Okay, so synthetic division. So right here, um, it's on page 254. So synthetic division, by definition, is a compact way of dividing polynomials when the divisor is of the form x minus c. Instead of writing out all the terms of the polynomial, we work only with the coefficients, okay? So we want to see if we can divide 6x cubed plus x minus 1 by x plus 2. So that means that c would be a negative 2. Okay, so if you solve this for zero, C would be a negative two. So we're gonna write negative two out here where my mouse is. And then we're just gonna put the coefficients of all of the terms. So the first term is the six X cubed. So there's a six. Notice in our original polynomial, there's no X squared term. So we have to have a zero as a placeholder. Then the one on the X, the one coefficient, and then the constant of a negative one. So we have six, zero, one, and negative one. So the first thing we do is we bring down our very first coefficient, six, with this arrow down. We multiply our divisor, negative two, um, by six, and we get a negative 12. That's where the arrows are going. So negative two times six is a negative 12. We add them. So we bring down the negative 12, because zero plus a negative 12 is a negative 12. Now we multiply a negative two times a negative 12, which is a positive 24. We add the one and the 24 to get 25. Now we do the last one, a negative two times the 25 is a negative 50. And we add them when we get a negative 51. And so because the, the last one um, is a negative 51, then it's not a divisor. It's not a, um, it's not a factor because it didn't come out to be zero. Okay. So, um, and you can show what it does become. So for example, five, it says, here's a polynomial, use synthetic division to evaluate P of two. Just like we would put two in as X and Desmos and find out what the outcome is, you can use synthetic division to basically get that outcome quickly as 21. And because it's not zero, then um, two is not a zero of this polynomial. And x minus two is not a factor of this polynomial. Okay. So let's do a couple here on my paper so you can see it worked out. Okay, so if one is a zero, then we're going to put a one for this coefficient, a one for the next coefficient, and a one. So we're bringing down the first one and then we're gonna multiply these together one times one and put it here, so that's one. And then we're gonna add them, that's two. And then we're gonna say one times this two and put it here, which is a two. And then we're gonna add them, which is three. So the remainder is three. So X minus one is not a factor of x squared plus x plus one. So we can go and see that in Desmos. Okay. 
think is number 16. And so we're doing y equals x squared plus x plus one. And I'm gonna turn off my other one. Okay, so here it is. So you can see there's no there's no real integer or no real zeros because it doesn't cross the x-axis at all. And you can see that by turning on the table. And if you put one in, you can see that one comes out as the remainder of three, just like we found. So pretty cool. Let's go back and try another one. Synthetic division is super fun. So you need to be able to show this by hand. These are my expectations to show this by hand. Um, so let's do um, number 17. So we have x minus four. We're seeing that that is a factor of three x cubed plus two x minus eight is p of x. And so c will equal four. So we're gonna do four. And then we have to do all of our coefficients. So three, there's no x squared term, so we have to put a zero, and then two for the x term, and then a minus eight. So we're bringing down the three, and then we're gonna multiply four times three as 12. Adding, we get 12. And then four times 12 is 48. And adding, we get 50. And then four times 50 is 200, and we get 192. So no. Um, and so this is actually three X cubed plus two X minus eight is the same as taking um, x minus four times, and then our q x is going to be this is going to be three x squared plus twelve x plus fifty. So this becomes right here, 3x squared plus 12x plus 50, and then our remainder, which is plus 192. <clears throat> and you can see that the way it's written, um, as it's really going to be written as 3x squared plus 12, that's a positive 3 squared, 12x plus 50 plus 192 divided by the x minus 4. It would get written like this. Because these two multiplied together plus our remainder would get us back to this original. Synthetic division is fun. Um, so the ones I'm going to be doing are really just determining if it's a factor. So I'm um, let's do a couple of those. Let's do um, oops. twenty-nine. So we want to see if 
x minus 3, so x minus 3, a factor of, this is the question, x cubed minus 7x plus 6. That's the question. And so we're going to do 3 is our synthetic divisor. And here we have a 1. We're missing an x squared, so there's term. So there's a 0 for that. Minus 7 is our coefficient on the x term, and then 6. So we're going to bring down the 1 and multiply the 1 times 3 that goes here. And we add them and we get 3. And then 3 times 3 is 9, and that goes here. Add them and we get 2. And then 3 times 2 is 6. And we add them and we get 12. So no, it is not. And you can see that f, um, well, if p, your p of x function, if you put p of 3 in there, you get 12. You don't get a 0. This is a 3. So let's go to this is number 29. Number 29. So we have y equals x cubed minus 7 x plus 6. So I'm going to turn on my table because then I can quickly check to see by putting in 3. 3 is not. But you can see 1 and 2 are. If we would have done 1 and 2, they would have worked out. Okay, so let's go ahead and try number 30. So we want to see if x plus 2 is a factor of P of x, which is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x minus 4. Okay, sorry, let me take you back to my paper so we can all be on the same page for number 30 here. So we'll see if x is x plus 2 a factor of that. Um, so c is going to be a negative 2. So negative 2. And then we're going to write all the coefficients. And we have an x cubed. So that's a 1. Our x squared term is a negative 5 for the coefficient. We have an 8 coefficient and then a negative 4. And then you're going to bring down the 1. So we get negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. They add to make a negative 7. And then a negative 2 times a negative 7 is a plus 14. They add to make 22. And then negative 2 times 22 is a negative 44. And they add to make a negative 48. So no, it is not. So P of a negative 2 is a negative 48. And again, we can check that by typing y equals, and it was x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x squared. And if we bring up the table, 
we can put in a negative two and we say it comes out to be a negative 48. If we would have used one and two, those would have come out correctly. Okay, catch me back for lesson three, four.